Hi, I am Matt Shadetech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the senior logic instructor for DubSpot and for DubSpot Online. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off in our last video, exploring the concept of resampling in logic using Reactor's granular synthesis instrument called Travelizer. So if you haven't seen the previous video, please check that one out because it contains all the steps that you need to get to this point. Now, normally I would play my example track, but I'm just to save time gonna ask you to go back and check it out in the previous video. And I'm just gonna dive right in here. So now that we've got the Travelizer set up on a software instrument track, it's being assigned to bus 41 and bus 41 is going into our audio track seven, what we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at the actual instrument. So let's open up Reactor, let's move it over a little bit here. And what I've done is I've actually cleared out the sample that I have in here because I bounced in place my other samples and I'm just gonna load them all in at once, just drag them across the three of them and drop those in there now. We can close the sampling area, the sample loading area. And here now we've got the panel for the travelizer. Now, this gate button down here, if it's on, it will cause it to continuously play a note once we send it a note. So if we turn it off, now it will only respond when we send notes. In this case, I'm using the caps lock keyboard, but you turn it on by pressing caps lock. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dramatically simplify this. I'm going to turn off a lot of the stuff that's on so we can kind of understand what's going on. So the first thing that I'm going to turn off is the resonator over here. This is a kind of a secondary effect that's not actually specific to the granular synthesis aspect of this. So I'm not going to go into it too much in this video. I'm just going to turn that right down. And so now we've got this. Right. And this is our sine wave sample that we saw in the last video. Now, What's being manipulated right now is the pitch and the position in the sample. So I'm going to turn them both off. And now we've got this. And now if we hold down the note and go over to the XY coordinates over here. There you can kind of hear the sample. There's also a delay going on here. I'm actually going to take the mix on that down and turn the feedback down. So now, now if, so that's the horizontal axis, right? It takes us through time in the sample. And if I take it down vertically, we're getting smaller slices of time. And this is kind of what granular synthesis allows us to do, is it allows us to slice a sample up into tiny, tiny grains of sound and replay them in any order that we want. So here I can go backwards through the sample, forward, I can play it very fine grains, right? Very. crazy noises or if we go up you can hear the grain is getting longer so now it's playing a long piece if we turn off the smoothing over here we can really hear that So that's pretty cool. Now the smoothing just kind of keeps it from being so clicky. So I'm actually gonna keep that up, but it's useful for hearing what's going on. Now, over here, we've got the pitch area. If we turn this on, what's gonna happen is there's an LFO here that's sweeping through and making some pitch changes. So let's turn it on. 
So you can see this little this little graph. Let's take like a and we could change the shape of the graph. It's going down. You can also change the rate. Very slow. Now in the pitch area, we can also have it respond, take its pitch from MIDI. Let's turn off the movement. Let's go up an octave. So we can play pitches with this as well. And that's actually how I created this sound right here. It's actually using that sample. And it's just playing my baseline melody on the travelizer with that sine wave sample. Over here, let's turn that off for a second. Go for a smaller grain size. And now we've got the position here. And this is going to animate the movement of the position. So if we turn this on, and again, we can control the rate. And you can kind of see visually what's happening. It's moving through the, the sample quickly or slowly. Something that I like in here is we can control the inertia. So if we move it, if we move the position, it'll kind of keep moving. If I move and stop at high inertia values, it has like almost like a little bit of physics to it. Like if it's all the way down, it'll just stop where I put it. But if it's all the way up, it'll kind of drift. And then come to a stop. So that can make some nice effects. And then over here we have this resonator, which is just another effect. Which for my purposes here is kind of transforming the sound more than I want it to. So I'm actually gonna keep that off for this tutorial. And then we've got a filter and delay. And we've also got a volume envelope. If we want it to fade in slowly, add some release and so on. This is kind of standard synthesis stuff. I'm not gonna to go too much into this. Now, if we wanna change what sample we're modulating, that's kind of slightly hidden here on this sample selector where we just change the number. There we go. There's sample two. And notice it starts at zero, so it's zero, one, and two here, because I have three. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've got everything set up and we've kind of explained the controls a little bit, I'm just going to do a little performance. And I'm just going to perform with the drum track. I'm going to turn off mostly everything. Um, maybe we'll keep the bass and run the track. Yeah, that's cool. So we're going to run the track and record, right, because we set up our track to record and record the audio as we go. So I'm gonna start with my, start with the sine wave sound, and I'm just gonna kinda of tweak out and do some strange stuff. So let's, let's give it a try. Hit record. Right, we can see the signals coming in. And I'm just gonna actually turn on the gate.
Turn the pitch on. Now let's change samples. And then let's get our last sample. So there we go. And now I'm just gonna turn the gate off to stop it. And now, oh, it looped back around so I got a comp. That's fine. What I'll do is I'll just take this and let's just unpack to new tracks. And now I've got a whole bunch of stuff. Definitely not all of it is, you know, excellent, useful musical material. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna use that. But some of that could be cool. And so then I'll just go through and be like, okay, yeah, I like this. This little piece here could be like a cool transition sound or, you know, maybe some of this down here. Yeah, some of that could be another cool sound, another cool little transitional moment maybe. I didn't turn on the uh, MIDI note capability and send some pitches to it, which would have given me more kind of pitched material. But as you can see right now, I've got lots of stuff here to go through and find little cool samples that maybe I could put additional effects on or cut up and use in my track. And that's how I came up with, you know, sounds like this and this. Right, just do a little reverb and delay on there. This one is also And then some stuff like this. So lots of interesting textures that are all kind of related to my original sounds because I've derived them by resampling my original parts. Now, this resampling concept you can do with almost anything. And, you know, the idea of recording audio and jamming like this is definitely not limited to Reactor or even to Logic for that matter. You can do it in plenty of other digital audio workstations as well. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you would leave a comment or uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos as they're released. And if you'd like to learn more about Logic, you can check out our 48 class course either at our school in New York City or online through dubspot.com. And if you'd like to learn more about me, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. 
Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.